Winter Rosie here. I have to admit, forcing myself to listen to 20 different songs from 20 different artists is tiring. As much as I want to discover and review any underrated release it does take a lot of time, and usually it doesn't even end up being on the video. So if I start missing out on some unpopular tracks I am sorry. Anyways, July was quite the month for K-pop. I honestly believe there wasn't any bad music release this month. Except maybe for some but overall I think K-pop is moving over that trash music phase. As always these are my opinions and you are absolutely free to disagree with me. It's a summer song and that's literally all there is to it. It's like ever since really really they've done one summer song every year. And in my opinion some are better than the others. I don't know which side this song falls on yet, but even so there's not much interesting or new things about it. That's like a problem with a lot with these summer songs. It's always focused one season of the year and done by almost every idol group out there, so it gets really exhausting listening to these. If you notice every hit summer song of the year always represents that point in time. Which makes these other summer songs get left out and forgotten. I also don't like how it ends abruptly. Producers should stop doing that. 7.2 out of 10. Again it's a good song. It just ain't hitting. While I do like the song a lot, this might be their most basic title track ever. It's a sound that I'm familiar with, even from them, and I don't think it stands out much. Hot did more for the album than whatever world did. Hot was a fun track, it was the perfect title for the album, and obviously it's a big hit for them. One of the biggest releases this year to be honest, so world just had bigger shoes to fill in, and it sadly wasn't enough. I love the vibe and everything, it's calming like a lot of their b-sides. And that's kind of a problem, because this sounds like a glorified 17 b-side. Don't get me wrong, they do have some amazing ones, but I'll admit not all of them are very engaging, at least to me. It's a cute song, I know that, but I also think it's unexciting. 7.8 out of 10. I'd gladly listen to Cheers over this any day. <laughs> like a I thought I was crazy, but then I checked, that this is their first official comeback since Unnatural. If you've been following me you know how much I fucking love that song. I didn't have high expectations for this, but I definitely was expecting a serve and a half. And you know what I guess they did. I want to bring out that I didn't like Unnatural on first listen, and right now I feel the same way for last sequence, just maybe a little less. The song doesn't really lack at anything. While its lows aren't that low, its highs are also aren't that high. There isn't a moment in the song that I can point was outstanding or anything. Not like every song has to have a killing part, but without one the song is kind of basic. And like how I've established throughout this series, basic doesn't mean bad, it just also means it's not that good. So I can't really give it any higher than 7.9. Not that their previous song was bad, it just didn't feel right to me. I personally like their poppier sound than their darker and moodier one. Look at Zombie, that song was a top song of the year no doubt. Nerdy isn't even half as energetic as Zombie was, but you get that chill yet still bouncy feel from it. You've probably heard of Bad Guy by Billie Eilish, and that's the vibe I'm talking about right now. Low key but still fun. Memon was a good song, I like that a lot more than how most people did. But I can understand that K-pop fans are tired of that aggressive girl crush sound that has gotten really old. So I hope y'all like this one cause if not y'all will never be pleased. I'm pretty sure I gave Memem an 8 when it released. And you know what I think this deserves just a bit more. I don't listen to MCND much so please bear with me. This is like my second impression of the group and I liked it. My first was with their debut Ice Age, and while I was confused I thought it was an interesting song to say the least. Mood is easily a lot more likable for me. You can't really go wrong with fun music. If you think this is bad in any way you probably just hate fun. This reminds me very much of YG music. The only thing is they did it better than YG themselves. 
I don't even like YG noise but if I ever did this is probably the best way to do it. And I don't really have much else to say other than that. I'm pretty straightforward. It's a good song and I think more people should listen to it. 8.2 out of 10. I know people didn't like Blessed Cursed already, so coming into this song I was really curious what the people thought about it. And to be honest I think they just don't like the aggressive sound on Enhypen, or just in general. I also do miss that old style they had, it was really unique to them. But personally I don't mind this new one. Yes I still think sticking to the old style would have been nicer, but there's nothing we can do about it now. I'm glad they released Blessed Cursed before this, because Future Perfect would have been a much harder pill to swallow. This song is mad aggressive, and thankfully I don't mind it much, or else I would have roasted this song to hell. Only like 3 members really fit the badass image, so I hope they don't stop here and try other concepts too. 8.4 out of 10. Never thought I'd hear Drill in K-Pop. Oh This sounds like a very aggressive itzy song. I didn't like tippy toes, so for me this is a huge improvement. I usually don't like these kinds of songs but I somehow connected with this one. It feels very powerful and that's what I like about it. It's an anthem, and for some reason I like those kinds of songs. Songs that shout at you, literally making a statement. The meaning of most K-pop songs are pretty chill or cute, usually about love. But a song like this requires strength and energy, and I think they did well at portraying that. Mascara is a song that literally shouts at you, and for some reason I love it. And no this isn't some kink of mine. 8.6 out of 10. I love it. I didn't expect to like this song this much. While I do like a thing. I had zero interests in this debut. I didn't even know it existed until I saw some TikTok challenges of it. My first thought was wow this sounds like one of those second gen girl group songs. And I didn't realize how much I missed that. As much as I love this generation's girl groups, there was something about that second generation that really hooked me. Box after box after box, that's how it was back then. I mean I was like 10 during that era so I couldn't really appreciate it much. And honestly I would do anything to go back to when that generation was at its prime. If you think about it this song ain't all that. I just like it a lot. 8.8 .8 out of 10. This is the most normal sounding Espar title track. Together with Black Mamba. And I won't even pretend. I liked it a lot. It's normal but still unique enough to be an Espar song. It just fucking slaps alright. I liked how complete the song is. Verse, chorus, bridge, dance break, and a proper outro. I've been missing these kinds of songs a lot. This list alone has about 5 songs that just end abruptly. Honestly sometimes I feel disappointed by it. So I'm glad this song doesn't suffer from any of those problems. Espa should do more normal sounding songs as title tracks. The girls just sound amazing doing it and you can't deny that. Espa has a really unique sound that I hope continues to get better after time. I don't care if it isn't a hit song like their previous comebacks. I'd gladly take this over any messy song. 8.8 .8 out of 10. What can I say? I love feel good music. Top 5 summer song of the year if we're being honest. Maybe even top 20 of the year period. I highly really enjoy these kinds of songs more than any experimental shit companies do these days. Yeah it's typical pop music, but fuck I'm a basic bitch, and basic shit like this gets me going. All these other releases are from groups I've already known and loved, so it is easier for me to get into new music from them. But on rare occasions, you come across new artists, and there's no better feeling than loving a song from them. The melody is so catchy you don't even know. The song could literally be about anything and I wouldn't care, because the music is so captivating. The thing is, this song is very simple, almost too basic, and yet it's still very lovable. I'm glad some companies realize that we don't mind normal music as long as it's well made. 9 out of 10. Simplicity at its best. Ooh, 
Not gonna lie. I wish they missed with this comeback. Cause if not then Stacy would be my top choice for song of the month. For the third time. And you know what fuck it. I love this song and I won't even pretend. It's not my fault Stacy doesn't know how to release bad music. Now that I'm a full time Swift. I was worried that I'm just going to start liking everything they released. So like with every group I stan. I tried to be more realistic and lessen the bias. I tried finding for any dislikes. And surprisingly, there are a few things I didn't like about it. My biggest problem with this song is how it ends. It's like they accidentally cut the last 10 seconds off the song. It's actually starting to get annoying. If you're gonna make a good song at least end it properly for fuck's sakes. But that be it for my problems. The rest of the song is phenomenal as expected. When they said this comeback wasn't going to be that conventional K-pop sound I was slightly worried. Because Stacy literally has lived off that sound since the beginning. And sometimes you just have to trust the process. Since they also said they were trying to break out of their comfort zone. And they did it amazingly. Beautiful Monster isn't a song to be played everywhere. It isn't a song made to be the best ever. But it is a song with great performance. Great production. It's a song with deep feelings. And it's a song for a group who is trying to challenge themselves as artists. This song is a 9.1 out of 10. This is a new chapter in Stacy's book. And I can't wait to read the next ones.